Thompson has passed his possible remaining two attempts at 580. And the bar moves up to 585. Jakobsen and Wojciechowski have both failed for Lisak. He goes clear. He retains his flawless record in this competition. Raised his fingers to indicate who's number one in this competition. Well, he hasn't been unbeaten this year. He's had a couple of defeats on the international circuit. But over the last couple of years, he's become one of the most formidable vaulters. Medals at the last two World Championships for the pole. Gold at the last European Indoor Championships. As we look at Pavel Fojciechowski, second attempt at 5.90. Whoa! Whoa, just look at his delight. What a great vault from Wojciechowski. Oh, what a terrific, that's a personal best indoors for Wojciechowski. That's two centimeters to what he's previously vaulted indoors. What a competitor, the last chance alone here. And he goes and produces this. Well, he's been getting some really good vaults when it's all been clicking together. He's had a few failures during the course of the competition. Needed three vaults to get over 565. But when he nailed it, he goes so, so high. You can see in the background there, Peter Lisak sportingly clapping his compatriot. With a rather rueful look on his face. How does Lisak respond to that? How does the defending champion come back? Lewandowski, Poland, Bebendorf, Germany, Inga Britson, Norway, <coughs> Fitzgibbon, Great Britain, Denisio, France, Gomez, Spain, and Sazenek, the very good 22 year old chef. Noted front runner, and he's decided to take up his familiar position at the front of the echelon. Denis Yell on his shoulder, and Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Well, rather leisurely opening lap and a half. Nobody willing to make the pace. So it's props, Denis Yell. Ingebrigtsen and Gomez with Marcin Lewandowski in fifth place, tucked on the curb at the moment. It's turning into the usual tactical affair that we so often see at major championship finals. Not sure it's such a good idea because the likes of Lewandowski and Ingebrigtsen have got fantastic finishes, so for the other six men, it might not be the best of tactics if they want to challenge for a medal. Sazanek also a very fast finisher, the Czech back in the penultimate position at the moment. And now Ingebrigtsen just moving up. Onto the shoulder of Jesus Gomez, the Spanish champion. Four laps to go, 800 metres. It was interesting there, I mean, as soon as Inga Britson looked as if he was going to make a move, Gomez immediately responded, but having taken the lead, he slowed it a bit. Well, I have to say, with Lewandowski and Inga Britson in this field, I'm a bit surprised that some of the other runners aren't trying to string it out, particularly Brock, who has a good times to his credit and a good career record in the under-23 ranks. But it's still Gomez in front with three laps to go. 2.21.30 at 900 metres. Still pretty leisurely pace. Now Inga Britson looks as though he's starting to just wind it up slightly. And Lewandowski plays very nicely. He's in third place, just covering those in front, making sure he's not uh, boxed in. 
Denisiel in fourth, Probst in fifth, Sazanak in sixth at the moment. Well, 400 metres to go. Ingebrigtsen swerves round Gomez. Gomez gives him a tap, and now Ingebrigtsen starting to head for home. Lewandowski now working hard in third place. Bit of daylight between the leading three, back to Denisiel. 57 seconds for the last 400. This is different. Well, Ingebrigtsen now coming up to hear the bell. Lewandowski on his shoulder. Lewandowski hits the front. Lewandowski now making his challenge for the gold. Ingebrigtsen now following him. Gomez starting to get detached. Gomez drifting back, still in third place, the Spaniard. This is the battle for the gold medal as they come off the bend for the last time. It's Lewandowski in front. Ingebrigtsen behind him. Has Ingebrigtsen got enough in his legs? No, it's Lewandowski pulling away to defend his title. Marcin Lewandowski takes gold, denies Jakob Ingebrigtsen a historic double, but a terrific race, tactically astute. Marcin Lewandowski defends his title and takes once again the European indoor 1500 metres crown. A last 400 metres in about 51 seconds, and that was uh, impossible even for Ingebrigtsen to match. Yes! yes well, Ingebrigtsen's made his mark already on these championships, having won the 3,000 metres gold. But a little bit more international experience for Martin Lewandowski. He timed his surge for home to perfection and gets rewarded with another gold medal. Ingebrigtsen's only going to get better and better, but at this point, well, Lewandowski came through, swung past Gomez, swung past Ingebrigtsen, 100 metres to go, and he has a terrific turn of speed, Lewandowski, of course, started his international career at the very highest level at 800 metres and has just moved up distance, still got plenty of speed in his legs. And Ingebrigtsen, with about 15 metres to go, just tosses in the towel and glances behind him, but there's a long way back to Jesus Gomez in third. Well, Poland having a terrific championship, and of course, if he's fit, he'll be able to defend his title on home soil in Turon in two years' time. shown as 7.09, that's quicker than she ran in the heats and semi-final, and now she realises just what she's done. Daphne Skippers ran the best time that she's done this year to take second, but the champion was Fobida, and she's been in brilliant form this year, that's her sixth win in seven major races this season, and uh, you can never run right off Daphne Skippers, who's got the silver medal, the photo is still needed to decide, I think, the third place for sure. But a wonderful run by this youngster from Poland, former European junior champion, now fully delivering at senior level. And the emotion has got to her. There we are, draped in the flag. Two Polish triumphs in quick succession from the men's pole vault to the women's 60. And it was Philip, and just behind her, in fact, a wooer, the youngster 
a personal best of 7.15, both the British athletes running 7.15, so terrific performance. Different generations here of sprinters coming together to share the good spoils in this race. She still can't quite get over it. <laughs> I think there's going to be some celebrations in the Polish camp tonight. Well, Ewer Svoboda away very quickly. Skippers once again left a little bit in a block. Philip also running well at this stage. Well, Svoboda no stopping her over the final 20 metres. Skippers again a lot to make up. Nevertheless, I think it augurs well for the summer. Skippers hasn't had the best of winters. Season's best though for Skippers. But she's coming through and starting to show the form that we've seen in previous years. A deeply impressive performance by Awur in fourth place, probably the uh, shortest of the competitors there, and they're just finishing ahead of Kambunji. A real battle on for the bronze medal, the first and second were fairly clear in the end. Um, Skip has such power and strength in the second half of the race, but Svoboda maintaining her form very well indeed, right the way through to the line, doesn't forget to dip, and she's got it. Set. Now the runners and doors don't like the inside lane, and that's uh, what Bolingo and Bongo's got, but I'm sure she'll work hard to try to overcome that. Lavia Nielsen of Britain certainly going very well and has passed the kudo of Italy already. Watch the Belgian on the inside as well. As they come to the halfway point, Sonan, the French athlete, and Kilbasinska from those favourable outside lanes, it is. Kilbasinska takes the lead. She's more used to running hundreds and two hundreds, so let's see whether she can hold on from Lucado in second place. Just one team, Switzerland, rather out of it at the back. But it's uh, Poland who lead, the defending champions. And France in second, Britain in third. Well, I think uh, Belingo and Bongo was hampered, certainly by having that inside lane. She didn't run as quickly as expected, but Belgium now making some ground with players out front. For Poland, it's Baumgart Witten. Disappointing the individual event, she'll want to make up for that. So she's got a good lead here now. Being chased hard by Zoe Clark, who similarly had a disappointing individual event. The Scots athlete, plenty of support for her. But the Polish team are going clear. Baumgart Witten leading, then Britain, then Italy. And a huge lead has been opened up by Van Gogh. Well, I don't know what was wrong with her in the individual, but she's going well here, all right. Clark will hand over to the youngster. And for Poland, it's Holub Kovalek, another very experienced competitor running for the defending champions. She ran, of course, on that gold medal winning team before. Rather inexperienced standing. Can she hold it on the youngster from Britain? Did creditably in her heat running here. They've been second in the British Championship. Being tracked by Amaro. Halfway stage of this leg. And uh, Anning is just in danger of being caught here, I think. So uh, we'll see whether the gap's narrowed. But certainly Poland holding on with Holub Kovalik. And Poland it is who are leading. Fiatia Ersetic, who's a formidable relay runner, will take over for Poland. Then it's Great Britain, and Ailey Doyle, another Scot. She'll get plenty of support. She too, plenty of experience. Milani going for Italy on their last leg. They're really spread out at the moment. We need something special from somebody to change this order. It's Poland, Britain, and Italy. And Sveti Yosevich surely won't lose this. As I say, she's a brilliant relay runner, even better than her individual talent. She was the European champion. Dolly Doyle says, close the gap. The crowd getting behind her. They love to see a Scott doing well, and Doyle is a doughty competitor. But it, surely this is too much. Surely too much. 
and Sviatielsic holding on to about a five, six metre lead. Poland look like they're going to retain the title and Britain coming along again in second place. And there's a bit of a battle on for third, the French holding on to take that on the line. 3, 28, 76, well only just over a second outside the championship best. But not especially close for our last track race. Well, Poland fulfilled their role as favourites. Peter quite rightly did wonder about the form of Baumgart Witten and Sweetie Ursetic, who certainly didn't perform up to expectations in the individual race, but put a baton in their hands and they become different animals altogether. And all credit as well to Kiel Basinska, who gave them a very good first leg lead. And of course, Kiel Basinska, better known over much shorter distances. It was a very useful all around performance from the Poles. Hayley Doyle, well, a great last leg, made up somewhat for the disappointment of the individual 400 metres for Hayley Doyle. But it was just too much to make up over the last 200 metres. There we see a complete combination. <laughs> well, the Italians were excited. I'm not sure they expected to get a medal. They ran really well for that. And I thought they might be a team to look out for. Pretty good talent in depth. And the British team, well, there's two Scots in there, so that's a fitting end for these Glasgow meeting with uh, both uh, Doyle and indeed Zoe Clark as well. This is Ailey Doyle taking over on that last leg. There really wasn't much chance of a change in the order on the last 400 metres. Here we are on the last lap with Sviti Ersetic leading from Ailey Doyle. And the Italians pretty isolated in third place, although the, behind them, the French team Close the gap quite considerably, actually. Just look up with the French athlete now, the last one, closing that gap on the Italians. But it was to no avail as Fieti Ersetic brings Poland home for that gold and Ailey Doyle taking another championship medal. Great record. Good relay run up. And Italy just holding off France for third with Belgium. A national record for them in fifth place. Just quickly checking my notes, that was the second fastest run ever indoors by an Italian quartet, just 45 hundredths away from their national record, but no denying the polls. Konijenko, Magin, Borisovic, Terzic, Perez, Rosalova, Bobasea, Enaoui, and Mio, the women's 1500 meters. The last oh, individual man. event of these championships on the track. <laughs> well, that's a go, and as always, we're fascinated to see what happens. Mio making sure that she's in strong contention of place, and indeed going straight into the lead, in fact. Well, she bided her time a little bit because Costa Halfen was in the 3,000 metres and she was able to follow that very fast pace that Klosterhausen began to put in in the second half. But now it's the two favourites, Muir and Enoui, in the first two places. And Muir deciding that she's going to control this. She's going to run at whatever pace she chooses to from the start. And the rest can follow the Queen. Muir leads. Tall figure of Turgic of Serbia is prominently placed there in third place. Mior from Enaoui. Just a little bit of jockeying for positions behind. Tyler McGee of Ireland, fourth from the back. But it's Mior. And then to see what the 400 metre time is. Perez of Spain moving up on the outside. 69.50, so not extravagantly quick. Muir just going at the pace she wants to go at. Enoui following. You know, Enoui's got a fast kick. But can she stay with Muir if she really piles it on? Terzic still in third place. Well, Bessea up there. McGean has moved up into uh, sixth place now. It's a brave way to run it from the front, 
But when you're as good as Muir is, you can run it up the speed you want to. Don't want to mess about and get possibly caught out. Although we know that now she has got a formidable finishing kick. The noise in the stadium beginning to increase lap by lap. Four to go now. And it's Laura Muir still from Enaui and Tezic. Not much change behind her. Not much change in the tempo. We'll take an 800 meter time now. And it's 2.19.12, so a little slower, and well, oh no, actually, it's almost identical. A 69.5, then a 69.6 lap for Muir. Metronomic running, ready to increase in tempo, I'm sure. Maybe she's doing it already, because she's looking terrific. Three laps to go, Three, 2.36, four at that point. Delano doing the best she can to hold on. This hasn't been particularly fast, so the whole of the field still in contention. Just 10 metres separating the first from the last. Muir has led from the gun. She's made it quite clear how she's going to run there. 2.52 shown on the clock there. It's Muir. She's stretching. She's speeding up. McGean moving into fourth place now behind Turgid. But Muir has opened up a gap. It's something like four metres now back to NOE. Muir is going for it. Enoui is second. The intensity of the noise increasing ever more. McGean into third place. But this is all about Laura Muir. A real superstar looking for this double-double. And look at the speed she's going. She's leaving some of the best runners in the world way behind in the track. This will be the bell for Muir. 3.36.86 for Muir. And we know her finishing kick. She's just playing it once more. She doesn't need that to win, but she loves to run as fast as she can. The Irish are cheering on McGean as she's on the shoulder of Anaui for the silver and bronze spots. McGean is into second, but here comes Laura Muir. Another triumph, a wonderful one in the 3,000 metres, and another wonderful one in the 1,500 metres. All the way from the gun, total control. The battle really on for next. Anaui dips to get second place ahead of McGean and the rest now trailing in as best they can. What a fantastic performance.